Hi again, everybody, and welcome back to Ed Randall's Talking Rams. Here on this video series, we are paying tribute to those men and women, members of the Athletic Hall of Fame who distinguished themselves on the field of play and brought honor to Fordham University. We hope you'll pass the word about this series to all your friends in the Fordham community and have them tune in. We continue our series of conversations with one of the most accomplished quarterbacks in school history. A 2010 graduate of the Gabelli School of Business, he left as our all-time leader in completions, completion percentage, passing yards, and touchdowns. Following his career here, he gained the distinction as the first Fordham player drafted into the NFL since Kenny Parker by the New York Giants in 1968. We welcome back to Fordham a quarterback who left an indelible mark, Hall of Fame class of 2017, and you can visit his plaque in the Rose Hill Gym, John Skelton. John, it's great to have you. Thanks so much for being with me. Likewise, uh, it's always talk, uh, always good talking to Fordham guys and kind of being back in that community. It's something I really enjoy. Uh, growing up in El Paso, Texas, had you, had you ever heard of a place called Fordham University? <laughs> no, I hadn't heard of it. I I know of Columbia because I had two uncles that went to Columbia and we came up right. on that visit and visited Columbia and they made a trip over to Fordham in the Bronx. And I'm trying to figure out where I was on a map. I couldn't figure out anything and never heard of Fordham before. And, you know, the rest is history, as they say. Uh, your dad was an offensive lineman at uh, Texas El Paso, later played in the CFL and the Canadian Football League. And there's a story that when his alma mater made you an offer as a walk-on, that your father burned the papers in the trash can. Is that, tr <laughs> is that true? He he was uh, he was quite angry. He was quite angry with UTEP. They they were recruiting me very hard ever since I was a sophomore and trying to, you know, invite me to games and come out to their recruiting days and this and that. And you know, when push came to shove, my dad goes, "Well, you know, where's that scholarship offer?" Like, well, you know, we we we've already have our quarterback for the class, and we'd love to give you a preferred walk on spot. And he just he was just angry. I, I can't fully attest to whether he lit anything on fire, but there was a lot of anger. And, and if, if anyone who knows my dad, he's got a short view. So he got really angry really quick about that. Did you want to go there? I would have liked to have stayed home. I would. I, I thought because it's, you know, I'm a local kid playing in El Paso would be cool. You know, I, I thought I would go to another school in Texas too, whether it was SMU or Texas Tech or some other schools that, that were recruiting me. But at the end of the day, no scholarship offer. And it was actually uh, my uncle and my dad got together and said, hey, let's go to the Northeast. Let's go get a good education, you know, and kind of visit some schools up there. So we did a bit of a road trip and ultimately ended up at Fordham. Your dad was your offensive line coach when you were quarterbacking in high school. And I'm just wondering when your offensive linemen didn't do their jobs, did your father yell at them? Oh, he yelled at them. He yelled at me. He yelled at everyone. My my dad was a yeller. People people would say, "Oh my god, that man's like, you know, such a jerk." The way he yells and stuff. But he yelled to make us better. He yelled to coach. And I'm coaching my kids' teams now, and I find myself yelling as much as he did. And <laughs> whether it's the old <laughs> lineman or someone else, I'm yelling at someone the same way he was. <laughs> um, you you just made reference about the fact that uh, basically Texas Tech. SMU, uh, other prominent schools in the Southwest basically ignored you. And talk, if you will, about what you just mentioned, about uh, your parents, your uncles thought it would best serve your interests to uh, get a good education and take a trip to the East Coast. Tell us about that. Yeah, so I, I have, uh, my mom's one of seven and she's, uh, there's, there's five brothers. And um, three of them went on to play college football, two at Columbia and one at Rice. So at the end of the day, when I was, you know, the recruiting kind of dried up and there was no scholarship offers, my uh, one of my uncles kind of took it upon himself to say, hey, let's let's go. Let's go figure this stuff out. Let's figure out where you're playing at the next level. You're obviously a, a college caliber quarterback, you know, whether the teams in Texas see it or not. And the schools in Texas want to offer you a scholarship. Let, let's go figure this out. So. Went up there, like, like we discussed earlier, didn't know where Fordham was, didn't know where on the map to, to put that pin. Um, and we just dropped off, off film at a few schools, Columbia, uh, Fordham, Holy Cross, New Hampshire, and 
ultimately uh, coach Masello was new into the position and they were kind of behind on recruiting. And um, he, he flew down to El Paso probably about a week or so later, watched me play basketball, one of my high school games. And I think it was the day next day after that offered a scholarship and reluct reluctantly at the time, because I'm still holding out that, Hey, maybe I'll get, you know, maybe Texas tech will come through at the, the last minute. And uh, after kind of talking about it and thinking about it, I said, you know, let's let's go to Fordham. Let's get that education and, and let's play football at the next level. Um, and, and you mentioned Columbia and two uncles that played there and, and they turned you down. What was their deal? <laughs> so the story that I tell, and I don't remember if this is factually true or anything, is we met with the admissions department before we met with any coaches. And basically the admission, the guy from admissions kind of did, uh, you know, you're a football player, you're from Texas, you got some family ties here, but we just can't fudge the numbers that much to get you into Columbia. So I said, all right, well, maybe I'm not Ivy League material, but Fordham's right down the road. I'll get just as good of an education. And they were able to get me in. I, I tell people, I had teammates all the time that, you know, because of football, it opened so many doors for them, myself included. And that's, I think, and part of the reason why I got accepted to a great school like Fordham. Uh, well, their loss obviously was was Fordham's gain. But uh, who made the decision? Hey, look, we're already in New York. Let's go to let's go to Fordham. Yeah, so it was, it was my uncle Javier, who uh, he graduated, I, I want to say in like 93, 94 from Columbia. And he's donated to the program. He's kind of followed his coaches from when he was there and the different places that, that they ended up at. And it was almost like, all right, we're in New York City, you know, we're already kind of going up the East Coast. So Fordham's in the Bronx. Let's stop there. Um, uh, Holy Cross uh, in, in Massachusetts. Let's stop there. We're going all the way to, to New Hampshire. You know, the, let's go all the way there. We stopped at a prep school in Connecticut, which. Did you guys drive from Texas? No, no, no. We, we flew into New York oh, okay. and then we ended up kind of doing the, uh, the I-95 mm -hmm. going north a little bit. And it was about three days. We visited about four or five schools. And ultimately, like I said, Fordham was the one that offered the scholarship and, and I ended up there. Had you ever been to New York City before? I had been once for my other uncle's wedding. So the, the other uncle, uh, Uncle Mario, that graduated from Columbia, he got married uh, when I was probably about 12. And I had flown to New York for that. So that was the only other time I had been to North, uh, New York. So you dropped off a tape at Fordham and the new coach, Tom Masella, said that when he saw your tape, he knew he wanted you as his first quarterback. Yeah. And I, I mean, that was a, a great honor. I, I remember coming in um, for summer camp. We came in a semester early to get, get a class under our belts and do some summer workouts. There's about six of us that were kind of the preferred guys that we, Hey, you know, we're going to build our program on these six guys and we're going to bring them in early and we're going to get that work in. So to be part of that, you know, core group of, of recruits from that first class that ultimately ended up winning a, a Patriot league championship the following year, I thought was a great honor and a great privilege. And uh, just the, the connections from that freshman class that I still have to this day has just been amazing. Uh, you said you played with a chip on your shoulder the whole time you were at Fordham and for that matter, later in the NFL, born out of rejection. Yeah, I, I do think it was born out of rejection when when you grew up in Texas and uh, my dad was a big Oklahoma fan and I'm watching the, the Red River rivalry and, you know, watching 100,000 people in the Cotton Bowl for a game like that. And then playing in Fordham, uh, you know, in 12 degree weather in late, uh, late fall with maybe, you know, a thousand friends and family at the game. I had that chip on my shoulder and I said, you know, as long as I keep performing, I keep playing, uh, kind of earn my stripes, you know, pay my dues and, and get where I want to go. It's going to work out. And when I was, uh, um, going through the draft process and the combine and everything like that, you know, they're like, well, you're probably going to be a late round, maybe sixth, seventh undrafted somewhere in there. And I was like, well, look, I, I've seen these guys at, at training. I've seen these guys at the combine. It's like, I, I know I can compete with these guys. So that ship kind of carried on into the NFL and ultimately fortunate enough to get drafted in the fifth round for, uh, for the Arizona Cardinals. Mm -hmm. uh, do you remember the first time you walked on the Rose Hill campus? I do. So that that trip that we took to visit all those schools, we, we were you know driving through the South Bronx because we came up through Manhattan and 
I'm like, man, I don't know about this place. There's just doesn't seem like the greatest place. But then as soon as we pulled You're up, not the onto first campus, to feel that way, John. Yeah, yeah. And I still feel that way when I'm driving <laughs> through the Bronx, at least certain areas. And, uh, once you pull into that beautiful campus and you got the gates there as you drive through the botanical garden on the other side of, uh, of the road there. And it's almost like you're transformed into a different world and the beautiful architecture and the, the green grass, the tall trees, everything like that. And then you see the stadium and uh, the Rose Hill gym and, and just how historic a place like that is. It, it's such a, a picturesque place to go to school and you're doing it in the greatest city in the world. Uh, into the Gabelli school, majoring in what? Uh, I love saying this. So I was a uh, business administration minor with a concentration in marketing and a minor in communications. Very and I just impressive. say that because it's, it's so long, right? But yeah, it sounds very ultimately, impressive. Ultimately, it was all the prerequisites. And I, I, you know, wanted to get into marketing because I thought finance was too hard and I didn't have that type of math brain. And I took so many communication classes, I like, might as well get a minor in communication. And I said, all right, let's do that. So uh, it was great. And it, it's, you know, the best four years of my life so far. Nice to hear. Favorite subject? Favorite subject? Um, I took a business ethics mm -hmm. class. I think it was my junior year. And what I really appreciated about that class is we had already done our prerequisites for theology. We'd done our prerequisites for philosophy. And I get into this business ethics class, and now we're kind of putting that into, into play and talking about different ethical situations and how you would handle it and how, how Immanuel Kant would handle it and how, how different philosophers through the years would handle certain situations. And I just think from that standpoint, it, it, it made the business world and kind of the, the Jesuit teachings kind of come into one, I think. And I really enjoyed that class. Least favorite subject. Uh, it, was, it was probably my finance two class that I took. I, that's the only class that I ever sat at a final and said, I don't know what's going on in this class. <laughs> I was, I was in trouble from day one in that class. And uh, I ended up dropping that class and taking it again in the summer when I could focus strictly on, on one subject and make sure that I did well in that class. So that was the hardest one to get through. John, uh, tell us about a professor who inspired you and made a lasting impression. Um, I, I really enjoyed Father Dennison. So he taught my uh, introduction to theology class as a freshman. Um, there was probably 15, 16 football players in that class. And anyone on campus knows if you walk in and there's that many football players in the class, it's probably going to be a class that everyone's going to pass. And <laughs> Father Dennison, with with all his knowledge and all his tenure and everything, it, it was it was great because I was in there with my buddies. I was in there with you know other freshmen, and I didn't. I grew up Catholic, but I didn't go to Catholic school. I didn't go to parochial school, so the class was very diverse and people that were growing up in Catholic schools and, and going to, to mass every Sunday. And then guys that, you know, just didn't really live that type of world, didn't, didn't go to church or anything. And Father Dennison, I thought, did a great job of bringing it all together and, and having great discussions in that class. And, and then uh, Saturdays after the games, we'd see Father Dennison at the tailgate after, after our game, and he'd be shaking all our hands. And he was just a great guy to be around. Favorite building on campus? Uh, I, I think at the time it was probably Keating just because of how beautiful it was and, mm. and everything that was going on there. Um, and then Rose Hill campus or Rose Hill gym and just the, the architecture of that gym. And I remember a couple of basketball games that were just amazing to, to watch there. And now the basketball team's rolling. So I could only imagine how, how Rose thrill gym is doing right now. Uh, so tell us where you lived. Uh, so I lived in um, Alumni Court South, which I think has been renamed now. I don't know what it's called, but that's where I spent my first year. I think it's year. called Skelton Hall. <laughs> oh, I didn't write a check that big, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, and then I went across to Martyrs, and Martyrs is you know such a large dorm that I had so many of my, uh, my friends in that dorm. We'd walk from one side to the other and, and meet with guys and uh, that was a lot of fun. And then my junior and senior year, we lived right off of co right off of campus at, uh, on Hoffman Street. Mm -hmm. And uh, we called all our buddies there. It was, it was a three level building and it was all football players. And we called ourselves the Hoffman heroes. And we still kind of <laughs> use that term to this day. 
That's wonderful. Um, if you had time for any favorite hangouts through the years? Huh, through the years. So for those, uh, I guess, current students or future students, everyone knows like kind of the bar areas out there. So there was no greater feeling than winning a game on Saturday and, you know, kind of licking our wounds and, and kind of hanging out on the couch at, at the, at the campus, uh, a cafeteria and then going out late late night and having a good time at Howl at the Moon Bar and, and just kind of hanging out with with the other students and, and with my teammates. Uh, you want to talk about the cafeteria food while you're at it? <laughs> I'd rather not. <laughs> I heard it's gotten a lot better since then but I mean some of my greatest memories were just sitting in the cafeteria for three and a half hours between class just hanging out with the football guys and being that rowdy bunch that we were. You played with a lot of guys. Uh, how many do you stay in touch with? Oh, so I'm I'm in Arizona right now. We just had the Super Bowl out here, and uh, my brother who lives in Texas. Uh, there's probably about probably about nine guys that ended up in Houston that played football at Fordham at one time or another. My my buddy Asa Lucas is out in L.A. He was here local for the Super Bowl. I go back to New Jersey. I see my buddies that live in the tri-state area. So. I would say there's probably about 15, 15 guys that I stay in touch on a regular basis with. Mm -hmm. When were you told that you were going to be the starter and tell us about your first game and your first, and, and if your first game was your first home game. Oh, you put me on the spot. So I don't remember my first start. I don't remember where it was or anything like that. It just, it seems like so long ago, uh, but I do remember, I think it was after our fourth our fourth game of the year, my freshman year, uh, Coach Masella brought myself in and brought um, TJ Jordan in, who was a, a year above me, a sophomore quarterback, and said, all right, guys, you two are going to you're going to battle it out. You guys are going to split reps in practice. You're going to split reps in the game for the next few weeks. We're going to figure out kind of who the starters moving forward. And I was like, all right, you know, I got my opportunity. You know, let's make the most of it. And, you know, about two games into that competition, I ended up winning and playing you know the final four games whatever it was as the starter and, and that was very enjoyable uh did your parents did john and ann make it to many games not many they they tried to do one a year at least one a year sometimes there was two sometimes a third but uh my mom being or both of them being a teacher uh, my dad being a coach it was hard for them to get away you know friday after school to get to a saturday game to fly back on sunday and Flights aren't cheap from El Paso to, to New York when you got to go through Dallas or somewhere else in between. But the games that they went to, they were always so much fun. And I'd have maybe my uncle drive in from Connecticut or maybe other family members meet me there. So it was if people were going to a game that I was playing in, there wasn't just mom and dad. There was going to be 15 people that were there, there to visit. What was it like throwing? And you've mentioned his name. What was it like throwing to your younger brother, Stephen? Yeah, I mean, that was a blast. I, right here behind me is a picture of him. He's blocking in this picture. But um, just the fact that he was there and just having uh, having family, you know, right down the hall in the dorms and being around him and working out with him and, and connecting with him the way that we did. It was it was such an amazing opportunity. And the fact that Fordham, I, I think at the time we had, uh, Joe, Joe can correct me later, but I want to say there's like eight brothers, eight sets of brothers on the team at one point or wow. another the four years I was there. Wow. Thomas Sella, your coach said he never felt he was out of any game with you at quarterback. I don't think there could be any higher praise than that, John. No, that, that's that's very generous of him to say. I mean, we got <laughs> wish we won more games. I wish we, you know, pulled some of those games out late and stuff. But yeah, that is a great honor to hear Coach Pacella say that. And I was really happy that he brought me to Fordham and gave me that opportunity that he did. And, and your dad said something really interesting. He said he, he had coached you since you were three years old in T-ball mm -hmm. and that it didn't matter whether you struck out or you hit a home run, you had the same demeanor and you couldn't be rattled. And Thomas Ellis said the same thing. Yeah, I, I think I got to give that that attribute to my mom. My mom's kind of the same way. She's she's very even keeled. Nothing really gets her too high or too low. And um not only in sports, I think in life, you know, I'm, I'm an eternally optimistic person, you know, things could be going really sideways really quick. And, you know, all you can do is persevere and power through it. And I think that's, it's one of those attributes that I'm glad I have. I think 
a lot of good quarterbacks have it and and just <laughs> I think life's happier and easier when you think that way than getting down and, and, and you said something else, uh, quote, I've always told people I'm the harshest critic on myself. Later on in Arizona with the Cardinals, the great receiver, Larry Fitzgerald said, quote, John is like emotionless. Nothing, nothing flusters him, unquote. And that served you well at Fordham. It, yeah, it served me well at Fordham. It served me well in life, I, I think, in general. And um there might be times where I might not show it externally and I might not, but, but there's, there's always that, you know, gut feeling that you have like, all right, we got to do something better. I got to do better. We got to improve, you know, as a unit or whatever it is. And um, it, it's, I guess it's something that I've just always had. And, and the fact that I, I mentioned earlier that my dad was a yeller and my dad was a, a hard coach. I think that probably uh, attributed it to, to the way that I take that outlook on life. What drove you as an athlete? Uh, I mean, it, it was probably just the the success and wanting to wanting to be the best at whatever it is I do. I, I tell my son right now, I was like, like, whatever you're doing, you just be the best at it. You know, you could end up pick, flipping burgers for a living. Like, be the best burger flipper there is, man. You, mm -hmm. you, the world's full of mediocrity and, and we don't need any more of that. So whether it's sports, whether it's life, whether it's business, that's that's mm -hmm. kind of the, the motto and the outlook that I see. As success came to you and great success came to you, how do you handle the pressure? Uh, I, I, I think the easiest way to answer that is just, you know, one day at a time, you know, whatever it is, one play at a time, one minute at a time. There are certain things that you can control. There are certain things that you can't control. And you just got to be able to know the difference. And uh, when good, when things were going good, you know, they're not going to last. When things are going bad, they're not going to last either. So at the end of the day, you just you focus on yourself, focus on what you can do to be better, focus on being a better teammate, being a better person, being a better father, whatever it is. And mm -hmm. I think it's little in incremental steps like that that ultimately lead to achieving your larger goal. Did you ever surprise yourself? Um, there, there was some times that in, in sports, I mean, in, in football and, in, um, you know, playing with the Cardinals, there were some times where it wasn't until after the fact I would look back and say, wow, that was, you know, that was pretty good. Or that was impressive or something like that. And I, I still to this day have people tell me, it's like, oh, when you guys beat the Dallas Cowboys and you made that fourth quarter comeback and you threw that ball to Larry Fitzgerald, it's like, oh, it was amazing. And I was like, well, thank you. I appreciate that. I guess it was pretty amazing. Um, a shout out time for you, John. Uh, talk about the coaches, uh, strength and conditioning people um who helped you along the way at Fordham yeah I mean just just getting to Fordham in general as a freshman all the way from Texas and you know being in the in the big city and playing division one football um coach Masella and his leadership as a head coach he was a deep more of a defensive minded coach but he would always tell me you know it, it's okay to punt or it's okay if you throw an interception just don't let it build into another one and that reassuring qualities that that coach Masella gave me were great uh, coach Brian Volk being the, the offensive coordinator and the quarterback coach and kind of having another guy who was, you know, from Louisiana that, that, you know, helped me come along as a, as a young quarterback and Ted Perlack in the weight room. I, I really enjoyed working with Ted Perlack. He, uh, he got to a point, I think it was towards the end of my junior year where I was doing so good in the weight room and getting so big and strong. He goes, all right, you're a quarterback now. Let's settle down. You don't, you don't gonna be throwing that much weight around. And I was like, Oh, okay. And, uh, just just my teammates around me and, and the guys that that pushed me and the guys that, you know, made me better as a player. Um, some of my offensive linemen like Andrew Tishnevitsky and Robbie Reese, some of the guys I used to throw the ball to like Asa Lucas. I just mentioned him, uh, David Moore, my brother, just guys like that, that, you know, to this day, I stay in contact with and really enjoy. Uh, did you model yourself after anyone? Uh, any any idols anybody anybody yeah so pe people ask me all the time too like hey, you know what you're from texas you must be a dallas cowboys fan and i was like oh, i hated the cowboys like my dad was anti-cowboys so i became anti-cowboys and like well who's your team growing up then i was like i rooted for the 49ers because of steve young and i rooted for the green bay packers because of brett Favre. and the way those guys oh, played the game was just boy. amazing boy i'm a 40 i'm a 49ers fan uh from a long time ago yeah and and when they beat the Dallas Cowboys, uh, that was my Super Bowl. 
this year. Yeah. I, I yeah. whatever happened against Philadelphia, I didn't. I didn't <laughs> care. So I'm in. The, I'm in the same boat. I'm in the yeah. same boat with you. Well, you were you were the Joe Montana days though. So that was. Oh no, I mean, yeah. Well, I go back then, to yeah. a guy named. I go back to a guy named John Brody. Uh, okay. Yeah. Because he threw the ball all the time, and I loved, I loved how the 49 when nobody was throwing the ball as often as the 49ers, I loved John Brody, and it all, it all started there. And then, of course, uh, Joe and Steve Young, and we know the rest. Um, yeah. Biggest win? Maybe that's an unfair question, but does one win in your career stand out? Yeah, we, so winning, winning the Patriot League my sophomore year, we ended up playing. Holy Cross, the second to last game of the year. And it was essentially for the Patriot League Championship. If we had won, we won outright. If they had won, they would have uh, won outright, regardless of the last game of the year. And that game, it, it's there's certain flashes of that game that just stick in my mind. I mean, the basically the the play that ended the game uh, was a Jason uh, James Crockett interception. He ripped the ball away from the guy. And as soon as that happened, just interception, turnover, game's over. We go and take a couple knees and just jumping around on the sideline with my teammates and enjoying that Patriot League win was amazing. Was Holy Cross another one of those schools that didn't give you the time of day? Because you said you were going to work your way up to Holy Cross. Yeah, so we went to Holy Cross and um, they had that same recruiting class uh, as mine. They had a guy named Don, uh, Dominic Randolph. And they're like, hey, we're set. We got our quarterback. He's going to be, you know, probably our starter for the next four years. And they're like, all right, well, we'll see what else comes up of it. So that made the win even sweeter. Um, it did, yeah. John, biggest disappointment? Uh, biggest disappointment. Um, you know, I, I was at Fordham four years, and my freshman year was kind of – understanding the offense and understanding college football and, and getting used to playing at that level. My sophomore year, we won the, the Patriot league championship. Like I said, we've got into the playoffs and the disappointment of not getting back to that level of success. My, my junior and senior year, that was something that, that really bothered me thinking that, Hey, we won the Patriot league my sophomore year. There's no reason we can't win it my junior and senior year as well. And not being able to do that, not making the playoffs again, during uh, during my tenure at Fordham was was pretty frustrating and probably one of the bigger disappointments. 